Hi, and welcome back to our video series. This is Jason Watt from Business Career College, and in this video, we're going to look at interest and inflation. We're going to see how these two things play off against one another. In order to understand this, we're going to just re refresh some basic ideas that we've already looked at here. So let's say that I have the ability to invest at 6%. Okay, I know that if I can invest at 6%, I can apply the rule of 72 here. 72 divided by 6 is going to give me 12. That means I have 12 years to double my money, or my money will double every 12 years. Okay, and then let's say that we have inflation at 2%. Okay, now inflation can mean lots of different things, and economists will debate what inflation is, but really to the average person, what inflation means is that it will cost me more to buy something today than it costs me tomorrow. So if I have a can of soup and it costs me, let's say, $1 today, I can add 2% to that cost. I figure that same can of soup should cost me a dollar two in a year. Okay. Now, hopefully, my salary grows to increase at the same pace as inflation, and then I'll still have the same purchasing power. And that's often what we want to equate here is what's my purchasing power with respect to inflation. So what does this actually mean? Well, let's say that I have an objective here. Okay. I have an objective where I know that in 36 years, I want to have enough money to help my kids make a down payment on a house. Okay. And I know this would cost me $20,000 today. And I figure that houses are going to increase just at a pace of inflation. I don't really care if that's realistic or not, but let's say that I just want to have enough to match that in today's dollars. So I can see here that that's not going to be $20,000 still. I know I'm going to have to have more than that. So I can take my rule of 72, 72 divided by... 2% inflation gives me 36 years. So if I'm 36 years down the road, I can take that $20,000. I know it's going to double once. That means in 36 years, I'm going to have to have $40,000 available. Okay. And that's the real amount of dollars. That's what I'd actually have to have. That would have to be the account balance in my bank. So now I know I can invest at this 6%. So the question here is how much do I have to have available in order to make this objective happen? So I know. Oops. Let's fix that. Sorry. I know that I've got the rule of 72 available here again. I'm going to take 72 divided by 6. I know that's 12 years. I know I have to have $40,000. So what I can look at here is I know my money is going to double every 12 years. All I have to do is say, okay, what's that going to come out to, I know that I'm going to have to have 20,000. So this will be my objective in 36 years. This is what I'll have to have in 24 years. I can carry that on here. I say, okay, 20,000 is what I have to have in 24 years. If I'm at a 6% interest rate, I bring that back again. I have to have $10,000 in 18 years, sorry, I apologize, in 12 years, which means that I have to have $5,000 today. If I start with $5,000 today, 
and I invest at 6%, if I can invest at that 6%, it will double to $10,000 in 12 years time. It'll double again to $20,000 in 24 years time, and it will double one last time to $40,000 in 36 years time. Now there's another way that I could solve this problem, and this is the easier way generally to deal with inflation. It's called the real rate of return. Okay, and by using the real rate of return, I can take my 6%, what we call nominal rate of return. Nominal means stated. I can reduce that by inflation. Basically, this represents me taking the dollars I need to reinvest just to match the effects of inflation. I can take that 2% inflation and I can use 4% then. That's what we would call a real rate of return. Oops. A real rate of return, or we might call that our rate of return net of inflation. And we can see then that if I take that $5,000 and invest it today, and I have this 4% rate of return, well, 72 divided by 4 gives me 18, so that's going to double up to $10,000 in 18 years time. And then I can double that again up to $20,000 in 36 years time. Adjusted for inflation, I will have $20,000 of purchasing power I will have $20,000 of purchasing power, which would be the same as having $40,000 actually in the bank. So when we look at the effects of inflation, we can see a number of different ways to apply this. The real rate of return is generally the easiest way to do this. And this does tell me the real effects of inflation. So if I know that I need to invest for some future objective, typically I do want to take inflation into account. It's a very real consideration and it does affect the rate at which my purchasing power grows and that's where we generally want to use a real rate of return when we have the data available to do so. I hope that's helpful in an explanation of real rate of return. If you have any questions please let me know. Thank you.